Yo, yo, what up? It is Raphael back again from NBADraftJunkies.com. And I have another video for you today. This video will round out my Mock Lottery 3.0. The two previous videos, I covered picks one through five. In the last video, I did pick six through 10. And if you need a recap, hopefully if you watched the first two, but if you need a recap, I'll go over them again. At number one, I had the Detroit Pistons selecting Kate Cunningham. And go check out my website, NBADraftJunkies.com. I did a nice article on why I think K would be the best fit for Detroit. I talk about just how his style of play is a perfect fit for the city. But at number two, I had the Houston Rockets selecting Evan Mobley. Number three, the Cleveland Cavaliers went with Jalen Green. Number four, Jalen Suggs going to the Toronto Raptors. At number five, I had Jonathan Kaminga going to the Orlando Magic. Scotty Barnes at number six to Oklahoma City. Number seven, Davion Mitchell to the Golden State Warriors. Number eight, Moses Moody to the Orlando Magic again with their second pick. Number nine, Jalen Johnson going to the Sacramento Kings. At number 10, I had James Booknight going to the New Orleans Pelicans. And now that leaves me at number 11. But before I get into that, I forgot to mention it. Subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, hit the like button. I'm sorry, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the like button, share, or hit the notification button, share, whatever this script is that I, I keep seeing people say, but you know what to do. All right, but let's get into it. At number 11, I have the Charlotte Hornets. Charlotte basically won the lottery last year. They selected LaMelo Ball, who ended up winning Rookie of the Year. I feel like Charlotte has established who their best player is. Now they just need players to build around LaMelo Ball. And in this pick, I'm going to swing for the fences. I'm going with a high risk, high reward pick. And it is Kai Jones from Texas. Jones is a, I mean, he is a talent. He's still raw. His game is not the most visually pleasing, but I mean, he is a, a fluid, coordinated athlete at 6'11". Shot 38% from three. I think he's worth the risk if I'm the Charlotte Hornets. So if I'm Charlotte, I'm going to take a high risk, high reward pick with Kai Jones. Maybe he's their center. You know, there's a big debate over his, his position. He could be their center of the future. A little light in the pants. I think he's probably less than 220 pounds. But if the 38% shooting clips that he shot his sophomore year at Texas translate to the NBA... LaMelo will have a pick and pop threat and also an athletic rim runner that can put pressure on defenses vertically. So if I'm Charlotte, I'm swinging for the fences at number 11 with Kai Jones from Texas. All right, at number 12, pick number 12 is Alperin Shingun from Turkey. Now there's some that say Shingun would be a better fit for the Hornets. And I, you know, I really don't disagree with that pick. I think either way, Charlotte should look at selecting a center. Shingun is more of a natural fit, but I think he would be good in San Antonio. Shingun is, I mean, one thing I can say is that he was arguably the best big man in Europe last year, despite only being 18 years old. The Turkish league is, in my opinion, the second best domestic league in Europe, behind ACB in Spain, and Shingun was dominant. I mean, he was putting up numbers we've never seen in Europe from somebody so young. I think Shingun is a lottery pick. There's some people maybe a little lower on him because his game is more so of a, a throwback center game, but he is a wide body, traditional big with a soft touch. I've seen some comparisons to Jokic. I think he's probably somewhere in between Jokic and Yusef Nurkic, but for San Antonio, you've had success with centers. I mean, I know that, you know, the last two centers you drafted high in the first round were David Robinson and Tim Duncan. Not saying that Shingun is going to be on their level, but the Spurs have had success with their centers that they selected in the lottery. So I would go with Shingun there. I think San Antonio needs a go-to guy and someone that's going to be the face of the franchise because I feel like they're stuck in, like, the middle of nowhere. Like, they're not good enough to be a playoff team but they're trying to make the playoffs and they're going to keep getting stuck in the back end of the lottery. So I think San Antonio needs to figure out what direction they're going to go in because, like I said, they're kind of stuck in no man's land. But Alperin Shingun will be my pick at number 12 for the San Antonio Spurs. 
All right, at number 13, I have the Indiana Pacers selecting Keon Johnson. Keon Johnson posted a 48-inch vert at the Chicago Combine. I, I believe it, it set a record. I mean, 48 inches, that's, that's crazy. And it's a perfect fit to me because Indiana needs help at the wing. You got Rick Carlisle as their new coach. And Johnson is somewhat of a, a project. I think that right now... The best way for him to get on the floor is with his, his defense. I think he has a really high upside as a defender. But he's shown some flashes of being a shot maker and shown you know some signs that he, he could possibly develop into a playmaker. So I think with Indiana, he'll add some depth at wing. So if I'm the Pacers and new head coach Rick Carlisle, I'm going with Keon Johnson. At number 14, it is the Golden State Warriors back on the clock for their second pick. Don't know if they keep this pick, but if they do, just like I mentioned in the last video, I think they're going to go with a player that's ready to come in and contribute now, and I think Franz Wagner would be a good fit there. Wagner's kind of like a jack-of-all-trades. He's a good passer. He can play pick-and-rolls as the role man or the ball handler. I think he's a very good defender, more so a, a smart defender that just understands how to play the passing lanes. And he's just a versatile guy that I think would be a very good plug-and-play piece for a team like Golden State that is looking to win now. So I think this would be a pretty seamless fit for Franz Wagner and the Golden State Warriors. At number 15, it is the Washington Wizards, and I'm going international for the second year in a row. Last year, they took Denny Avdia from Israel, and this year, I would go with Usman Garuba from Spain. Garuba would give the Wizards an athletic defender, and you can make a strong case I mean, some would say Scotty Barnes, but you can make a strong case and say Garuba is the best post defender or best defender in this draft class. I think he'll definitely be ready to come in and contribute on the defensive end. Offensively, I see him kind of playing a role as the energy guy that gets garbage points or hustle plays, I should say, kind of cleans up the mess, will get some points as a role man. But you never know, playing with Westbrook, you can get a lot of those points off dump offs. And I think that he would give the Wizards a, a role man that they don't necessarily have. Well, I mean, I guess Daniel Gafford came in and was their vertical lob there and role man. But I think Garuba would be a, a, a good fit with Russ. And also, the most underrated skill in Garuba's game is his passing. I think that he could really be a difference maker in short roll situations. So if I'm Washington, Usman Garuba would be my pick. At number 16, it is the Oklahoma City Thunder again and they're gonna and we're gonna hear their name one more time and I'm sure they would be glad to see Josh Giddy fall here I don't know if he actually falls to number 16 but on my mock I haven't fallen to number 16 the Thunder are just stockpiling picks and stockpiling talent Giddy is a 6'8 or 6'9 I mean I've seen both sizes 6'8 playmaker that is one of the best passers in the draft if not the best I mean I would say it's between him and Sharif Cooper he is like a, I don't want to say poor man's, but if you compare his film to LaMelo's in Australia, they're very, very similar. I mean, both are triple-double threats that whip the ball across the floor, that make high-risk passes that not a lot of people have the confidence to make. So Giddy in Oklahoma City, along with Scotty Barnes and Alexei Pokashevsky, would be like the biggest passing positionless lineup even though I say Giddy has a defined position but they would be fun to watch I mean that ball would probably be moving all over the floor with, with those three guys so I think Giddy would be a good fit there at number 17 it is the Memphis Grizzlies and this is another player that has kind of fallen in my mock I've seen a lot of other mock drafts where they have him going in the lottery and he's ready to come in and play right now he has a defined role a little underrated as a defender, but it's Corey Kispert from Gonzaga, who is arguably the best shooter in the draft. At one point this season, he was flirting with like 50, 45, 90 shooting splits, dead-eye shooters, drawn a lot of comparisons to Joe Harris. And if he can be Joe Harris, I'm sure that would be a welcomed addition to the Memphis Grizzlies backcourt. Now imagine this. A lineup of Ja Morant, I'm not saying it's going to be the starting lineup, but a lineup that, that they could put on the floor. Ja Morant surrounded by Desmond Bain and Corey Kispert and let's say Jaron Jackson as the pick and pop guy. 
I mean, that will be a lot of space. I mean, basically, you're telling the defense to pick your poison. Do you stop Ja or do you stop the three-point shooters? That would be a great fit for Memphis. Even though Memphis is pretty stacked, I don't know if they really need any help at the wing, but if Kispert falls to them, that would be a great situation for, for both parties. At number 18, it is the Oklahoma City Thunder again, and I would go with Zaire Williams. This is another swing for the fences pick. Zaire was a highly, highly regarded prospect out of high school, and I believe he was the highest rated Stanford recruit ever. And unfortunately, he did not have the season that many expected him to have. I think that there was a lot of factors involved in that. I know he was injured at the beginning of the year. Stanford was like a team without a home. They were staying in hotels due to all the restrictions in the Bay Area or the Northern California due to COVID. So I feel like there was a lot of factors involved with why he struggled. And I'm just going to be honest. He did not have a great year. He didn't look healthy, but the talent is there. Heard he grew to 6'10". You don't find too many guys that are 6'10 with shot-creating ability that also can develop into a playmaker. So I think he's worth the risk for the Oklahoma City Thunder, who have a million picks. So they can just go for the players with the highest upside and you know, gamble because they have a lot of picks. So Zaire Williams to the Oklahoma City Thunder, I think, would also be a good fit. And number 19. All right, Knicks fans. I think you'll like this pick. I have Trey Mann from the University of Florida. Trey Mann was one of the best shot creators in all of college basketball last year. And he's what I call a three-point shot creator. Like, I want to say like 70% of his three-point attempts were created by himself. Only about 31 around that range were assisted. So he was able to create a lot of buckets, a lot of threes off the dribble. He's a, a, I said, a shot creator. He creates space. And I think he'll be a good fit in New York. He's listed at around 6'4", 6'5". And the Knicks need help at point guard. The Knicks really need help at point guard. In my opinion, I know Knicks fans are hard to please and some are going to be on my neck. But I feel like with New York, he addresses a need of another guy that can get a bucket. I feel like in the playoffs, their offense got exposed a little bit because they lacked shot creators are guys that can get buckets. I feel like they struggle to score a little bit, and that's what Trey Mann will be able to come in and provide. So Trey Mann to the Knicks at number 19. All right, at number 20, and the Atlanta Hawks are, depending on how you look at it, but the fact that the Atlanta Hawks are in the Eastern Conference Finals is absolutely mind-boggling to me. I know I didn't see them as one of the top two teams in the East coming into this year. Nate McMillan and Trey Young and John Collins and Capella, Bogdanovich, all of those moves that they made over the past couple of years have definitely played off. Atlanta, or paid off, Atlanta is way ahead of schedule. And if this pick, if they get this right, I mean, it could really push them into having a you know, a team that's going to be a force to be messed with for years. You got Sharif Cooper, who allegedly was 6'4". Like, can, can you believe that? They said he measured at 6'4 at the combine. Has to be a mistake. If you would have told me he was 5'11", I would have believed you. But if Sharif Cooper is indeed 6'4", he would not be around at 20. In my opinion, the most electric and exciting player in all of college basketball Cooper is a phenomenal passer, phenomenal playmaker, lightning fast, should thrive in the NBA's open court situations, especially with a floor, especially with floor spacers and a vertical lob threat. There is a question about his shooting. He shot about 22 or 23 percent from three, but he's a good free throw shooter, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. But again, if he's really 6'4", I don't think he falls to Atlanta. But just in case he does, I mean, that would be a great fit because I feel like Atlanta really could use a, a backup point guard or floor general to, um, to play with Trey Young. And if you have both of those guys, then that means the defense is not getting a break the whole time because you got two guys that can make plays for everybody, make everyone around them better. So if Atlanta is fortunate enough to have Sharif Cooper waiting for them, I mean, that would be a, a great situation there. All right, back on the clock is the New York Knicks at number 21. I would go at Isaiah Jackson. I believe Nerlens Noel is a free agent. I'm sure the Knicks fans would love to have him back. 
but Isaiah Jackson could be a scaled down version of Nerlens Noel. I know they both went to Kentucky. They both are pretty much defensive specialists, but I think Jackson has some upside. But right now, Jackson's main role will be as a defender. He has a 7'5 wingspan, and he was one of the best shot blockers in the nation. And if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that Isaiah Jackson would be the first Kentucky Wildcat off the board on draft night, I would have said you're crazy. But yeah, I love the fit of Isaiah Jackson to the Knicks. And if they can develop him and develop his offensive game, then it's a real steal there. At number 22, it is the Los Angeles Lakers. And Los Angeles is in win-now mode, so Chris Duarte would be the perfect complimentary piece to LeBron and Anthony Davis. Duarte is a, a shooter, a big wing shooter, which is something that the Lakers needed. It seems like their fans are off Wesley Matthews. seems like the fans have a love-hate relationship with Contavious Caldwell Pope and, and also Kyle Kuzma. I mean, I remember last year, I mean, they had like a petition to get Kuzma off the squad. So with all that being said, even if both are back, I still think the Lakers need to address the need for a shooter. And Duarte will be 24 on opening night. So he's a little bit more polished than the rest of the players in this class. So I think he should be able to come in and play right away and, and have an impact. And if you're the Lakers, getting a big wing that can come in and contribute in the draft is an ideal situation. So Duarte to the Lakers, that would be my choice there. All right, back-to-back -back picks at number 23 and number 24. It is the Houston Rockets. It seems like, I mean, this draft has been Magic, Warriors, Rockets, and Knicks. I would go with Jaden Springer with the first of the two Rockets picks. I would go, well, the first of the two Rockets picks in their 20s, I should say. But I would go with Jaden Springer. Jaden Springer is a, a combo guard. I think he has high defensive upside. One of the youngest players in the draft. His numbers were efficient this year on a low volume of attempts, but I think that he would be a good fit there with their timeline. If John Wall is there at the beginning of the year, he can learn from Wall, and then hopefully they can get Wall out, out the paint because Houston needs to basically just have a roster of guys that are on the similar time frame. So I don't expect Wall and Eric Gordon to be there all season, but if Springer can begin the year learning under Wall, I think that would be good for him. And then at number 24, I would go with Greg Brown. Brown can stay in his home state of Texas. Brown is a freakish athlete, one of the best athletes in his class, definitely one of the top five athletes in his class. I think Keon Johnson may, may hold that title right now, but Brown was another guy similar to Zaire Williams that came with a lot of fanfare into his freshman season. Didn't necessarily live up to it, but I feel like Brown has helped himself at the Chicago Combine. Super athletic. I think it would benefit him the most if he spent some time in the G League with RGV, which is the Rio Grande Valley Vipers, because the Rockets have done a great job of developing players in their G League. I mean, the two guys that come to mind off the top of my head are Clint Capella. I want to say he spent the whole season in the G League and pretty much got a call up around the playoffs. You got Robert Covington also. So I think Brown would benefit there because offensively, he doesn't really have a skill set that he brings to the table. Unless, you know, you're going to use him as a vertical lob threat or, or energy guy. But if he can work on his ball handling and definitely his outside shooting, he could be a very, very high-level two-way player. All right, down to the last five. It is the Los Angeles Clippers. And the Clippers are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. And they are playing well. I mean, they're competitive. I mean, they're without Serge Ibaka and Kawhi Leonard right now. You have to wonder if you're a Clippers fan, if they were healthy, would they be a lock to go to the NBA Finals? But since the Clippers' offense seems to be based off or heavily dependent on the three ball, why not add another three-point shooter? I would go with Trey Murphy the third from Virginia. Was one of the best shooters in the nation, shot over 40% from three, and he would give the Clippers another sniper and another complimentary role player for Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Now, Kawhi is a free agent, but I think he comes back. So, if I'm the Clippers, Trey Murphy the third would be my pick. Number 26, the Denver Nuggets, and I'm going with buckets. Buckets, buckets, buckets. That's what Cam Thomas does is score buckets. May not move the ball, may not be a playmaker, may not be a great defender, but he does figure out a way to put the ball in the basket. Not even the most efficient three-point shooter, but he had a weird stat where he averaged seven three-point attempts per game but also got to the line seven times per game. Like, how often do you see that? One thing he does is, like I said, put the ball in the basket. He would be an instant offense guy off the bench. 
So if I'm Denver, I'm going with Cam Thomas. At number 27, it is the Brooklyn Nets. And man, what a disappointing finish to the season. The Nets were my favorite to go all the way to the title. And I mean, I felt like outside of injuries, they were there. And that was without all their guys playing together. Harden played well, KD played well, Kyrie is Kyrie. And unfortunately for them, they ended up with two of their top dogs injured during the playoffs. Just terrible timing. But I still think the Nets should look to add some size in the draft, and I would go with Charles Bassey. Bassey was one of the top recruits coming out of high school. I think maybe towards his senior year, he kind of fell off a little bit. But I want to say maybe around his sophomore, junior year, a lot of people thought he was going to be a top five pick. A lot of people projected him to be a one and done. He chose to go to Western Kentucky. That was kind of off the radar. And then his sophomore season, he had a, a broken tibia, I believe, after 10 games. But he had a strong junior year. He rebounded, he scored, he blocked shots. And I think that is something that the Nets need. So I would go with Charles Bassey at number 27. At 28, it is the Philadelphia 76ers, and this is going to be a very interesting offseason in Philly. What are they going to do with Ben Simmons? I will move him, but I don't really know a, a team that would be a good fit because I feel like no matter what, Ben Simmons is going to put up good numbers during the regular season. He'll put up good numbers in the first round. And then once you face some stiff competition, he's going to run from the ball and not do anything. But if he is back, I think Philly could look to add another ball handler. I know Tyrese Maxey was there last year. I think Tyrese is more so of a combo than a natural point. Same thing with Shake. So I would go with Jared Butler, and hopefully everything is okay with Butler. I saw that he's in this, like, I don't know, he has to do some type of testing or whatever, not fit to play. I pray everything is all right, but I think Butler would be a good welcome addition to the Sixers. He'd be another ball handler. He shoots the ball well, shot over 40% from three. He brings winning intangibles. And I think he's ready to come in and contribute, which is one of the things I keep saying for certain guys because I feel like there are guys that are projects and then there are guys that can come in and, and crack the rotation on the playoff team, and Butler is one of them. So Philly, I'm going with Jared Butler. All right, at number 29, it is Bones Highland. So before the pre-draft camp, I had somebody else in the spot, but I think Bones has played his way into the first round. He's a shot creator. He gets buckets. He's tough, and at 29, he would go to the Phoenix Suns, who are in the Western Conference Finals. Phoenix, just like Atlanta, two of the biggest surprise teams. Two teams that I thought that they didn't have enough playoff experience to really make a run or make some noise in the playoffs, and boy, have they proven me wrong. But yeah, I mean, if Phoenix can, can get Bones Highland, another guard that they can bring off the bench and come in and, and score, that would be a big win for Phoenix who has a very, very bright future. I mean, they have a young team. Outside of Chris Paul, they have a young team. Maybe Chris Paul and Jay Crowder. I mean, you got a lot of guys that, that, are, that are young and are not even close to their prime. So the future in Phoenix is as bright as the sun in the Arizona desert. And last but not least, it is the Utah Jazz. And we got to see what happens with Mike Conley. Conley's a free agent this year, and I felt like Utah kind of got exposed in the playoffs. They needed another guard. Conley was banged up. Mitchell was banged up. And I felt like they still needed, like, another guard. I mean, it was a lot of Jordan Clarkson kind of creating his own buckets. They need someone that can score and defend multiple positions. So I would go with A.U. A.O. DeSamnu from Illinois, who was one of the best players in all of college basketball this year. I thought it benefited him coming back. Because at one point I felt like he should have came out on last year's draft. But... Coming back another year may not have really done a lot for his draft stock. I mean, there's still some people that have questions about what position he plays, but I think he did well for himself. All right, that wraps up Mock Draft 3.0. I tried to get through it as fast as I could. Stay tuned for more video content from me. I'm trying to put out 90 videos between now and the draft. I know it is a, it is, it, 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 it's a lot. It's definitely going to be challenging. But I want to put them out. Once again, it's Raphael, NBA Draft Junkies. I'm out.